The May 2024 move to T1 in the US and Canada will impact settlement and post-trade processes for FX market participants. To prepare for this move and ensure timely settlement, they'll need to execute existing manual processes more quickly or alternatively automate post-trade processes. We can speak now to Keith Tapel, of course, uh, Chief Product Officer, who is part of the team at CLS, engaging with the market participants to understand and address FX post-trade implications with the transition to T1. Keith, thank you so much for joining us here on Cybus TV. I hope you've been enjoying your week in Toronto uh, so far, as much as the rest of us have. Uh, let's get straight into it. For those who might not be familiar, uh, could you briefly explain the significance of the move to T1 for US and Canadian securities and its implications for the FX market? Certainly. So I think it's just worth looking at through some history, right? The, the move to shorter settlement cycles for securities has been a long time coming. The move to T plus one is further driving potential benefits for investors and reducing risk. Uh, I was reflecting actually only a couple of days ago and the first equities I bought in the UK, uh, I believe it was T plus five, right? So I show my age slightly there. Um, but look, it, it really is about shorter settlement cycles and that's gonna put strain on trading and operational processes. Uh, the, and, and what does it mean for FX? Okay, we've got a shorter settlement cycle you're losing 24 hours, mm. it's from T plus two to T plus one. Uh, and you need to pay for your securities. You know, there's a currency leg to that transaction. And obviously the, the US markets are, are global in terms of how they're, they're attractive. There's a significant amount of activity in terms of overseas markets. So there's a currency leg required. Uh, and those transactions are gonna need to happen in a shorter time frame to, to buy for, you know, to, to pay for the securities or to, if you're selling securities, to get back to your home currency. And it's gonna require some industry collaboration to ensure a smooth uh, transition. Can you just talk a little bit about the importance of that piece? Absolutely, so if you think about the asset management community, for example, you know, they have a, a vast number of service providers. So you know, it's particularly the asset management community that's gonna be impacted by this change. Uh, they, they have, we're going to have to see collaboration, financial market infrastructure sites like CLS, obviously the likes of DCC in terms of the work they're doing, but all the service providers in terms of the full chain from pre-execution all the way through to settlement need to be part of this process. Uh, we've set up some advisory groups at CLS as part of that with our members. We're in contact with a wide range of industry bodies. Um, and I think the real issues are now starting to really crystallize out and people are now looking for solutions or working through the solutions. Mm. How has CLS been able to participate, uh, well, anticipate and support uh, the T plus one trade flows before the industry-wide shift uh, in 2024? I think it's really important to note we do support T plus one settlement um, today, uh, and we have done since the inception of the CLS settlement service. Um, our cost off in terms of submissions is, uh, is in, in, in US hours, it's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, you know, that's the pinch point at the moment, mm -hmm. right? In, we're thinking about a situation here. We, we, we know the situation is many firms trade uh, a market close, uh, the equities market close. And so logically then you've got you know, a couple of hours to get the, the full life cycle from an FX standpoint done so you can settle your transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, but so we support D plus one and we're open to submissions to the, until those timeframes. One of the things we are looking at, and, and it's a you know, recent development, is whether those timeframes could potentially be adjusted. Uh, but uh, we have to be very careful about moving anything because we settle at CLS settlement about six and a half trillion dollars worth of value every day. And that's a big number. It's a lots of zeros there. Yeah. Uh, so anything we do needs to be very carefully considered. Let's talk about some of the concerns uh, for potential issues uh, that FX market participants are, are thinking about in regards to settlement with CLS after the move to T plus one. Yeah, so I guess the concern is you know, there's enormous benefit to getting the trade into CLS settlement. It's, it's obviously principal risk mitigation, um, but also very deep liquidity um, optimization. The typical trade down in CLS settlement for our multilateral netting processes and some further optimization is about 99% trade down, right? You see you're funding 1% of the gross that you're settling, gross notional. Um, so th there's, a real, there's a real concern uh, that people don't want to lose that benefit, right? It's, you know, that benefit's totally aligned with public policy, safer markets, safer FX markets, settlement risk, et cetera. And, and people don't want to end up in a situation where the trade 
uh, goes bilateral risk again and potentially is a, is a, is a T plus zero trade. That's sort of the worst outcome in terms of my engagement with the market. People want to avoid that. And to your point earlier, there's a lot of industry collaborators say how, what processes can change, whether it be trading, uh, operational processes, where people are located, the types of service offerings that particularly the asset management community to, could, could take from their custodians or other market participants. And we're in that picture as well, related to the timings of our service. Mm. To what extent does a shift to two plus one um, affect current CLS volumes and, 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 and values? That's a great question. So we've done an analysis quite recently to say, okay, what could it mean, right? What, what could it mean in terms of the totality of the values we settle moving potentially outside of the timeframes that we operate in? Because yeah. you're, you're losing more than just 24 hours, you're losing a bit more than that because of custodian cutoff times. And normally you know, an hour, two hours or so um, prior to our cutoffs in terms of our settlement cycles. Uh, and we've done analysis of that. You know, we've looked granularly hour by hour in terms of the behavior in the market today. And, and this is a key point. Without any behavioral change, and there will be, yeah. uh, we think about 1% of our average daily values that we settle in the platform uh, could potentially move out, which is not a good outcome for the market. Um, and that sounds like a small amount, um, but it isn't. Right? That's about 65 billion. <laughs> Uh, of, of gross national that could potentially be in the bilateral market, whereas today it's very safely settled, settled mm. in CLS settlement. So we're not underestimating how impactful that will be, and that's why we are part of an industry conversation about uh, how we operate uh, and the broader picture in terms of market change. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges that has been raised is the fact that the CLS settlement cutoff time for payment instructions related to FX uh, transactions is midnight CET. Mm -hmm. And you know some market participants are indicating that this may be a, a concern. Is that something that's being reviewed by, by CLS? It is. It is something we're looking at. I mean, as you, as you rightly point out, that midnight equates to six o'clock Eastern, you know, there's that two hours there, could it move it a little bit? Maybe an, maybe an hour makes a big difference. And so we're looking at that. If you think about my previous numbers I mentioned to you, we need to be careful to protect the 99% as well. Mm. You know, CLS has been in, in operation, CLS Settlement's been in operation for over 20 years. It's got an amazing track history, it's grown, it supports a huge, you know, the biggest and most liquid market in the world. And so anything we do needs to carefully consider the risk in terms of the, in the totality of the system. But it is an active conversation uh, at CLS and, and with our broader member community. I suppose someone will always be impacted. It's a matter of trying that's to... Right, that's right, that's right. We need, we need to, given how systemically important we are, we have to be safe. Mm. Uh, but we're absolutely open to change uh, and supporting the market through this change to the extent it's appropriate. Okay, nice. we are... some, uh, some big numbers there. I hope people following at home have uh, got some long notepads for all those zeros. <laughs> Very interesting conversation, uh, of course. So thank you so much for your time, uh, Keith, joining us on Cybos TV. I do hope you have a fruitful uh, couple of days left here in Toronto. Uh, Keith Tapel, uh, Chief Product Officer at CLS. Mm -hmm.